Okay, so today we will speak about system setting. So I'm Benjamin Port. I'm from Enyoka Haute Couture, a French um, development company that sponsorized my time to, to write the slide. That's why I use a system. So let's start. Are you smoking? So the, um, why we need system settings? As you know, Plasma is a powerful environment and there is lots of configuration. And so we need to let the user have a way to configure them. So that's why we have the system setting. System settings is composed of many, many modules uh, for Plasma. For example, the time is for Plasma, but also for other stuff like sound with Pulse Audio or display or fonts and everything. Everything is a module on the system setting. So I guess everyone knows what is system setting, but yeah. So what are modules in a lower levels on a screenshot? So modules are QWidget or QtQuick based. Uh, in the future, there will be all QtQuick based. Uh, it, it, it's a goal for for KD Framework 6 to, to don't have uh, QWidget modules anymore. So mostly of them are based on, on the KConfig framework. It's a configuration framework. I will tell you more about that in the next slides. And there is also some other configuration frameworks used there. Q settings, gconf, and yeah, some some other some other for some modules. But when we we uh, were like one uh, one year ago, some stuff were broken. For example, we don't have the apply reset and default button work as expected on all, all of the modules. Mm, lots of times, the state was not the one expected. And in many cases, the uh, visual feedback for the imitable entry was broken. Uh, I will tell more about imitable entry in the next slide too. But basically, we need to disable a widget if it's imitable. And that didn't work at all for all modules. So I will tell you a bit about uh, Kaconfig and Kiosk. So, like I said, Kaconfig is a framework for configuration. It abstracts the way we store data for configuration on the disk. It's a kind of unify with some specific stuff and that allow uh, cascading. What that mean is we can have a configuration at user level, but we can also have configuration at system level and if there is configuration at user level, it will be took. And if not, we will use um, the one at system level. And if there is no configuration for this item at all, we will take the one from the code. Mm. It's what do config basically, really basically. Um, Chaos is a framework that based on Kconfig that allow administrator to create control environment for the user by customizing and locking almost any aspect of the configuration. So basically, uh, you don't want the user to change the, the font. You, you can say, oh, I want the font to be imitable. You do that on the configuration file. And at the end, the user have a configuration module with font disabled. So they can't see the font, but can change that. It's really important for enterprise, call, university, and, and lots of, of area like that, because in some case, we don't want to, to let the user block the setup. So what we see in the previous slide is we have problem with um, state of button not working and also imitability not working. So we needed a solution to, to fix that. So the config XT was the, the, the chosen solution. It allowed 
to use the an existing system because our config still already exists and have lots of benefits for us. So Kconfig XT is based on Kconfig and it allows to automatic, automatically sync a widget and setting value. Mm, the configuration entries are declared on an XML file. I will show a bit of that work later. And with the Kconfig compiler, you will generate C++, C++ code automatically that you can use directly. In fact, it generates a Kconfig skeleton subclass that generate for each configuration key a config skeleton item. Mm, there is different kind of item uh, if you uh, for string, for color, for boolean, and whatever, uh, and that we manage all things automatically for you. So if you are using a newer file, so yeah, a bit old fashioned nowadays we do everything in Qt Quick, but at the time Kconfig XT was created, it was not the case. Uh, if you name a widget starting with KCFG as prefix and the um, key entry name as suffix, it will automatically bind the settings data and the widget. So it will be a bit of magic and everything will work. By everything, I mean the dialog button state will work. So the, we will enable or disable the default reset and apply button when it's needed. So basically, if you didn't change anything, the apply button will, will be disabled and the reset button will be disabled. If you change one setting, the boss will be enabled. And if configuration are not like the default one, the default button will be enabled. And you don't have to, to do the logic for all your items. It, it will be unlocked for free by Kconfig XT. It also takes in consideration immutability and disa will disable the binded widget. And also, the, a nice thing, it can be used to generate documentation of configuration option. Because like I said, with Kiosk, you can change the configuration file, mark some, some item as immutable, but you firstly need to know the name of, of those items. And if you have all, the, all that on an um, XML file, CASFG file is an XML file, it will be easy to auto-generate documentation to, to show that. But in this case, there was some drawbacks. Mm, we needed to port all module to it. And yeah, there is tons of module because Plasma is slightly customizable. And there was no Qt Quick support. And like I said earlier, uh, the plan for the future was to have all modules on Qt Quick. So it was a problem for us. So the idea was to bring Kconfig XT to Qt Quick. I want to thank um, Kevin at Tense for that. He, he did the first, uh, st the first work on, on this attempt. Uh, so basically, Qt Quick module are based on config module. Mm, so there was a creation of a managed config module that will extend config module with Kconfig XT support by registering the skeleton automatically. This allowed to use the KCFG file again and manage config module, take care of default state and stuff like that. So this, at the end, uh, the, the dialog button will be on the good state for free for us. But for that, we needed to port all modules from config module to manage config module and from kconfig to to kconfig xt. By that, I mean, uh, don't use kconfig directly, but use the class generated by kconfig compiler. And at the end, in the QML side, add setting state binding. Um, for, a, for a graphical item, it will bind it to a, to a setting entry, and that will allow it to handle the immutability. So basically, if the item say, oh, it's immutable, we will disable the, the parent item. So with that, at the end, it was a huge work to port not all, but a lot of them to, to manage config module. And that brings us new idea. Uh, 
Um, the first idea was, oh, newcomers can be a bit lost on system settings because you know there is tons of settings. So allowing them to find what differ from the best plasma configuration, you know all that the best one is the default one, can help them. So basically, when you are a newcomer, in lots of in general, you play with settings because oh, nice, I can I can configure everything, and at the end you say hmm. I don't really like that. It was better when I didn't change anything, but you don't remember what you changed because you are crazy and you click everywhere. So allowing user to know which module what change and when they are in this module, which time what change can be really important uh, and useful. So yeah, a I guess a screenshot can, can let you understand a bit better. So basically, here we can see um, I change fonts, I change startup and shutdown, search and regional settings and fonts because there is an um, uh, orange dot. So you have um, a button to click to see that. It will be available with Plasma 5.19. Yes. And uh, on the model side, you will see there is, a, for example, the general font change. So it's in uh, orange and the anti-aliasing. Oh yeah, Plasma 5.20, sorry, uh, my bad. Uh, so this will be orange when there are not default one. So if I hit the default button, I know exactly which, we, which uh, settings will be revert to default value. So how, how that works? So we we have used setting state binding again that will allow it to highlight item when needed. Uh, there is still some limitation because it's still not done for all modules. Major modules are done, but still work on going. Uh, it work only for kconfig state based module. Mm, it's not exact, but yeah, mostly, and work well with um, with bridge time because we need the custom custom support on the time so other time we need to support it to highlight key and for the model list level um, we needed to load all modules when we start a system setting not when we start but when we click the button to show to highlight defaults um, Default module, and the problem at this time it was if you want to load a module, you needed to load UI too, and it it was not ideal. So we introduced KCM module data that will um, handle settings and and expose them to KC module. In fact, in the past, KC module used used it uh, directly. KC module or config um, managed config module on Qt Quick Site. And that will allow to split easily data and UI because in the past everything was declared in the same same place, more or less. Now it's split. It. So by regrouping all settings on the same place, we can just load the settings without the UI and without the change that will be made if I change UI because I don't want to save it. I just want to know what is on the disk. And now we can ask easily a module about its default state and uh, there is no performance issue. In the future with, with this, we can imagine some other use case like improving module searchability. So basic, uh, basically, like I said, we can improve system settings searchability. We can query information from KCFG using KC module data to have up-to-date data because currently um, search on system settings is done by looking at desktop file. And um, if you add another uh, field to uh, settings, you will probably not update the desktop file. So it can be interesting to use it in the future. And that can be used by Carrener too, to improve the Carrener discoverability too. And another idea can be to highlight corresponding field. So basically, you see what we did with default. We can imagine the same thing. Uh, basically, I search a general font, and it will highlight general font. So 
I know in which module is it and also which field is it because there is some module with tons of fields and it's hard to find them. But more generally, we can imagine to interact with CACFG file data and have other idea, global revert, export or something else. Those idea is not idea I think we need to do, but was what go to my head when I wrote this slide. And yeah, basically it's people idea, we can think about it, it's uh, pretty new. So yeah, let's see in the future what we can do with it. So if you want to be a wizard too, you can use, um, use it. So basically you will need a full module data that will extend CASE module data. Uh, this will register your full settings. That was a class generated by your CACFG file that exposed item properties. Then we will have a full module that generates manage config module and have a full module data attribute. And you will expose the config skeleton. So the full settings from CACFG module data through the queue property. So you can access it from QML and the QML code will bind item using setting state binding, and you will do a bit of semate. But I guess with a bit of code, it will be more, more clear. So I took as example the desktop same setting because yeah, it's an easy one. There is only one entry. So basically for the KCFG side, there is two files. There is a KCFG uh, C file. It's is a file that, that declares to the compiler which file to compile, the class name generated, and some other extra data. I will not go in details here. Um, and then in the um, CACFG file, you can see you, you have a group name, uh, the, um, a file name, it's a configuration, the configuration file on your disk. The group name will be the group and the entry name. And you can also have a label. Currently, we don't use them, but I, I think in the future can be a good idea to, to use them. That can be useful for stuff like, like search. And there is also the default value. Um, so basically, the CASE module data. Uh, so yeah, he, he, it's a non-interesting file. It's just here to collect all settings. Oh, this is on the case uh, you really use kconfig for example, for for Sony, Sony it, based on queue settings, uh, there is a bit more of code. But for lots of cases, there is no code, and yeah, there is an ongoing effort to have a same macro to generate it because yeah, there there is no interest to write this code. Or it was basically the same for all modules. So basically, yeah, we have settings and we call auto register skeleton to register all skeleton, uh, all skeleton to, have, to have them when we query it. Uh, there is also the manage config module. Mm, nothing really interesting here, just we use uh, the desktop temp data created earlier and and we expose the uh, as a queue property, the desktop setting and on the QML side, we can see here the with the QML item is a grid view. KCM is a, yeah the the grid view for all temp modules, and we bind it with the desktop temp settings. And the setting name is a name, so setting name is uh, the name of the temp. And yeah, we have a here an extra enabled condition is because setting state binding will do the um, immutable stuff. But basically, we will also want to disable if we are currently downloading a file. But everything is not perfect. All settings don't use kconfig. Like I said, Sony uses uh, uh, settings. Pulse Studio uses gconf. So we can't use KCFG file for them. So car property skeleton item was introduced. It enabled us to declare to declare um, skeleton manually and and synchronize them manually with uh, gcon for queue setting. It's a lot of more work, but it will allow us to have something more homogeneous. And on the binding part, there is also some difficulty. 
basically, sometimes uh, for, I guess, historical reason, we have one configuration key uh, bind to multiple widgets or the other way, one widget that, that, that will have uh, multiple configuration keys. So yeah, I guess in the future, we need to, to we need to prevent that because it's hard to maintain and yeah, we can have uh, auto binding. So I think we need to to probably write um, configuration migration to avoid that because I'm not sure there is really a use case where we can do the other way. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I, I guess there is because chair not is right. Perfect time. Okay, so it looks like we have three questions so far. One is still being typed. I'll give it a second. Or maybe we can take this question number two. Um, that question says, will these changes make it easier to make variants of the appearance of specific settings if desired? I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, oh, the question is, is still answered. Oh, so yeah, we uh, as I know for now we can't disable um, hide settings, but yeah, we can we can disable them. Uh, I'm not sure there is plan to hide them. Perhaps someone else knows that, but. Yeah, not sure. All right, well, let's go to the next, the first question, I suppose. What should I do when I can't base my module on kconfigxt? For example, for highlighting change settings, can I still use kc module data? I'm asking for global shortcuts, so don't know how I would use K property skeleton item. So basically, it's the case of Sony that don't use really con config uh, XT directly. So yeah, you can still use um, KC module data because it will be just more works because yeah, you will need to handle what is default and yeah, when you inherit uh, or why the is default method. Uh, to highlight uh, default settings, also it's doable, but it will need more work because you will need to do everything more or less manually. And we have done that for some modules. I don't remember which one, but yeah, we we, we did that. So yeah, I, I hope I answered to this question. Okay, well, next question then. We can have, when can we have a system that syncs all my Plasma and KDE app settings to the cloud so it gets recreated when I reinstall? Mm, so when someone will do that? Uh, I don't know. It, there is no plan for that. Uh, yeah, a good solution is not to reinstall. But yeah, I know sometimes we change uh, setup, so it's needed. Uh, you can probably already export your configuration file, but there will be perhaps some stuff you don't want anymore. But yeah, there, there is no plan at, plan at all, as far as I know, to save stuff for, to the cloud now. But it can be a good idea. Awesome. OK, last question, unless one more trickles in. Will kconfig config XT incorporate kiosk functionalities, or kiosk will exist as an individual app? So. Kiosk is not an application, it's a framework. So basically, is a, what enable to, to put in the configuration stuff like immutability. It exists, I guess, from decade now. <laughs> uh, it's not something new. It's something used in the past. In, at some times, it was not working anymore as expected because some stuff are broken. But yeah, it exists, and there is some, no, nothing new, and there is no app for that. Uh, I guess we expect a system administrator to write the configuration directly on, on their favorite text editor. 